Welcome back to your ACCA F5 trainee videos. In this session, we are going to deal with uh, throughput accounting, a short example on throughput accounting. I would like to remind you before we get into the example that in the idea or what lies be behind throughput accounting is that the only variable costs in the short term from this um, scenario are the direct material costs. All the other ones are fixed costs, including labor, they are considered fixed costs or operating expenses of the period. Uh, usually when we are dealing with uh, throughput accounting, it is used in a just-in-time environment and what we aim to do is to eliminate the bottleneck resources which tie up money in our production process. So there is usually one bottleneck resource that we are dealing with and we want to maximize the efficiency of our production line. So this is why we uh, are calculating something that is called the throughput accounting ratio that shall have a certain value and we shall identify how can we maximize that. So in terms of the example, I put it on your screen. Um, there is a company ABC that manufactures one product, that's product X. Product X requires two hours of machine time. And besides all other resources that we have on, let's say in an unlimited, virtual unlimited quantity, the machine time is a bottleneck resource because we have only five machines available that can work 40 hours a week. So in total we have 200 hours of machine work available during the week. Our product price is 75 and the direct material costs are 40. What is required from us in this example is to calculate the throughput accounting ratio. Do you, you do remember that the throughput accounting ratio is equal to the return per factory hour divided by the cost per factory hour. I'll put it on the screen. So the throughput accounting ratio is equal to the return per factory hour divided by the cost per factory hour. In order to um, be able to call our uh, product, say, profitable or efficient, the, pro the production process to be called efficient, this accounting ratio shall be higher than 1. Obviously, if the returns are lower per factory hour than the costs we are incurring, it means that our accounting ratio is lower than 1, then we have to do something because it costs us more to produce the product than we actually get a gain out of it. So let's proceed to our calculations according to a formula. First, we have to calculate the return per factory hour. And the return per factory hour, I'll put up on the screen, factory hour is equal to the throughput per unit, per unit divided by the product's time on the bottleneck resource product time on bottleneck resource, right? In our case, the bottleneck resource is the machine and the product time on the bottleneck resource for one unit is just two hours. Now what we need additionally is the throughput per unit. The throughput per unit, please remember this formula, it's very similar to the margin calculations, that just that we don't take into consideration the same variable cost as we do take into consideration when you do marginal costing. Here we only take into consideration the, the, the material cost, the direct material costs. All the other ones are considered fixed ones and they are going to be uh, included in the cost per factory hour as total factory costs or other operating expenses besides the direct material costs. So throughput per unit is equal to the sales price or sales revenue less the direct material costs. So in our case, it will be, um, let's just check the figures. It's 75, the product price, less the direct material costs, 40. So $75 less the 40, that is $35, right? That is our throughput per unit. So our return per factory hour, factory hour will be equal to 35 divided by 2 hours. And that is 17.5 dollars 
per hour. Right? So it can be translated into words that our bottleneck resource is able to generate $17.5 per hour. That is the throughput that it generates. Right? Now, in order to make sure that we can calculate the throughput accounting ratio, we still need the cost per factory hour. We have to make sure that both the return and the cost is on the same um, amount of time expressed per hour in this scenario. So the cost per factory hour is just going to be equal to the total factory cost divided by the total time of the bottleneck resource. Of the bottleneck resource, right? And in our scenario, let's suppose that the total factory costs amounts up to $3,000. And the total time available of the bottleneck resource is a weekly we know that it's five machines and they work 40 hours. So that is $3,000 divided by 200 hours. And that is amount of $15 per hour. Again, the cost is expressed in an hour. So the cost to maintain that 17.5 revenue per hour, return per hour, is $15 per hour. Now we can immediately see that the throughput accounting ratio will be equal to 17.5 divided by 15. Oh, sorry, that's fine. That is the 1.167. It means it is higher than one. So our product is still efficient. It's profitable for the company. But um, let's go back a second for the cost per factory hour. Note that whatever is not a direct material cost goes into the total factory cost that it has to be expressed, if it's not like this in your question, it has to be expressed on the same time level as the time that we use down here. So it shall be, in this case, $3,000 per week that we divide by the total time available on the bottleneck resource. Otherwise, we have to make some adjustments to bring those two on the same level. Now, what is our objective when we have a two-put accounting ratio? If we have several products, more than one, then we compare these accounting ratios and we rank the production according to the throughput accounting ratio. Obviously, what we want to achieve is a higher throughput per uh, hour of the bottleneck resource, a higher return. Yes, and that's reflected by the um, return per factory hour. And the cost per factory hour is usually the same for all the products because all the other uh, expenses are the same and we have usually one bottleneck resource. And then what we want to maximize, we want to generate more throughput by the bottleneck resource. We, we are going to produce more of the product that has a higher throughput accounting ratio. In case in this situation, we only have one product, we have a one throughput accounting ratio that is higher than one, but we could also discuss this in terms of how, key, when, how it can make this more efficient. Obviously, in order to increase the throughput accounting ratio, we could on one hand increase the prices so that the price is not, let's say, if the market allows that it's not 75, it's 80, then we'll, that will immediately increase our throughput accounting ratio. We can oh, de decrease the direct material costs, we can rego renegotiate, we can buy in bulk, so that our direct material costs go down, that's also increasing the um, return per factory hour, that will mean that the TPAR goes up. Or we can reduce the cost per factory hour, by either, no, either reducing the labor costs or reducing um, any other costs that go in the total factory costs, any other operating expenses that are allocated and included in those $3,000. What else we could do? Obviously, we could uh, extend the total time available of the bottleneck resource. We could purchase some additional uh, machinery, for example, that will increase the total time available of the bottleneck resource, which will decrease the cost per factory hour by some amount because if we probably purchase some new equipment that will push up the factory cost, most probably by the uh, depreciation of that particular item. This is how you should deal with throughput accounting in your examinations also. Further on in our next video, we are going to discuss about uh, decision-making techniques in the short term.